Hi everyone, it is June 7, 2018. I'm going to read this article and I'd love to hear your take on this. I find it interesting some of the language that this author of the article has used. Survivors penning revenge obituaries to settle scores with the departed. How do we know if it's revenge? Only the individual who penned the obituary knows if it was a revenge obituary, but we don't see in the article anywhere that someone said they were taking revenge. Perhaps they were writing the truth. So this woman, Kathleen Demlo, I'm going to say that that's how it's pronounced, but it could be wrong. This is what it reads. She married Dennis Demlo in 1957 and had two children, Gina and Jay. In 1962, she became pregnant by her husband's brother, Lyle, and moved to California. She abandoned her children, Gina and Jay, who were then raised by her parents. She passed away on May 31, 2018 in Springfield, Minnesota, and will now face judgment. She will not be missed by Gina and Jay, and they understand that this world is a better place without her. The posthumous pillaring of the dead, or the revenge obituary, is part of a growing trend that has family members digging up dirt on the deceased and getting the final word. How, why are they digging up dirt? That dirt didn't need to be digged up that this woman had abandoned her children. That's not a very good practice, abandoning your children. Uh, it goes on to say, the latest is a local newspaper obituary for Kathleen Demlo, who passed away last week at a nursing home and could barely have hit any harder. She passed away, well, I just read that, I'm sorry. Um, not the most touching words of remembrance for the 80-year-old who once became pregnant by her brother-in-law and abandoned her children according to the now viral obituary, which was picked up by everyone from London tabloids to a slew of buzzy social media sites. From the somewhat humorous Michael Flathead Blanchard enjoyed bun, uh, booze, guns, cars, and younger women until the day he died, to the more morose the obituary column has become, for some, a place where furious family members can final settle, finally settle their scores with the departed. Um, it's interesting, furious family members, uh, no one knows if they're furious, finally settling their scores you know, when you abandon your children, those children have feelings about it. What were they supposed to say? Something really rosy about their mother who abandoned them and left for California? Well, perhaps they didn't have anything rosy to say about her. But here, in 2017, after Leslie Ray Popeye Charming of Galveston, Texas, died of cancer, his family penned an obituary calling him a horse's ass and a model example of bad parenting with mental illness and a complete commitment to drinking drugs, womanizing, and being generally offensive. Well, you know, I... I frankly think the few funerals that I've attended and listened to people that I know had an, had 
an awful lot of issues with their mother or father. And then they stand up and, and talk. They, they glorify them. Why? Because they're dead? Uh, what is wrong with telling the truth? And I don't think the children who pen these obituaries should be at all vilified for telling the truth. Another one, when the Reno Gazette Journal published an obituary for Marianne Teresa Johnson Reddick after she died in 2013, which described her lifetime torturing her children in every way possible and refusing to allow anyone else to care or show compassion towards them, there was such an outpouring of shock and disbelief that one of Johnson Reddick's daughters decided to pen an explanation. Catherine Reddick recalled her childhood where she and her seven siblings were beaten, starved, drugged, and made to sleep on the kitchen floor while her prostitute mother had guests over. She went on to say, I've tried to forgive and forget, but I cannot close the memories of her foul and hateful words and many evil gestures she inflicted upon her children or anyone who tried to protect them. Even though I am older, happier, much gentler, I've never felt a great sense of peace or relief than the day my brother called me singing, Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead. Not everyone finds these types of obituaries so cathartic. After reading Kathleen Denlow's obit, one of her relatives, Dwight, told the Star Tribune Kathleen was sorry for the way she treated her children. Well, did Kathleen tell her children that? We don't know. And many mothers who are, well, they should not have been mothers. They have spouses that put them on a pedestal. And they have people that put them on a pedestal. And they believe what the deceased has told them, and it could be complete lies. So they then vilify the children who yeah, have issues with that mother or father that was abusive or abandoned them, whatever happened. We don't know the truth. Um, Dwight believed that Kathleen's son was behind the obituary. He's very upset. He decided to go out with hate. I can't believe he did this. This is going to hurt a lot of people. What about the parent that hurt the children. What about what happens to the children? Somehow we seem to forget the children and blame the children and protect the parent. This has got to stop because that only perpetuates the abuse. Parents, I think, believe that they have complete protection they abuse, neglect, and blame their children as they're raising their children. They become adults, and the, the adults are filled with issues. There's a lot of discord because whatever happened in their formative years and their young years never gets resolved. So all of that stuff just sits there. There's an awful lot of resentment. You just keep trying to go on, go on. You live every single day. Nothing gets resolved. And if the children, the adult children, actually speak the truth, well, they are labeled as unforgiving. They are just hanging on to the past. They were unable to let go as if, as if they should. And they're hateful. Wow. Talk about just adding more abuse to those children who were abused. 
uh, Anne Rosenberg, a grief counselor and licensed clinical social worker in New York City, told Fox News, there are a myriad reasons why a survivor would want to drag a family member's name through the proverbial fu uh, funeral mud. Well, that's not in quotes, so we don't know if she actually said drag a family member's name. Hell, parents, don't abuse and neglect your children. Give them a healthy, loving, caring environment, and you don't have to worry later on when your children grow up to be adults. Uh, frankly, I, I have to say, I thought about this, and I thought, well, maybe this is a good idea. Maybe children should start writing the truth in the obituary, and then parents might think twice about abusing, neglecting, abandoning their children. Because they might have in the back of their mind, oh my God, when I'm dead, what are my children going to write about me? But it's not dragging a family member's name through the mud. It's telling the truth. So this is what Rosenberg apparently said. In one sense, it could be a last bit of revenge by publicly letting other people know about how terrible their parents were. But it might not be a case of revenge at all. It could be a way to reach out to others like them and find someone to bond with over a similar experience. Or it could very well just be, I'm not going to be writing bullshit about my mother or father when they're gone. I'm going to write the truth. Reddick said the obit she wrote about her mother was meant to be a part of the healing process. She said she initially expected the scathing write-up to go unnoticed and claimed surprise by the fact it went viral. Claimed? Why are you saying claimed? You're writing about someone who is not known, not famous. Eh, it's your mother. You put it in the local newspaper. Yeah, you would think that it would go unnoticed, but it went viral. So the author of this article clearly um, has a real problem with this practice uh, and is suggesting that Reddick knew that it would go viral by qualifying Reddick's surprise with claimed. She said, the obituary ignited a national discussion that unveiled the secrecy and shame of child abuse. She said, I have no regrets. Let the journey begin. So, what do you think about this? Writing the truth. What do you think of speaking the truth at, at funerals about people? The truth is really important. And the fact is, is that this has been one of the last taboos. I can't think of another taboo. You cannot talk about your past. You cannot talk about your child. You, uh, you'll be judged as um, airing the dirty laundry. You can't talk about what parents do to their children. Parenting is awful. There are few parents who raise their children, put them on a, a healthy trajectory so that they become healthy adults, loving, caring, compassionate adults. Few, most, are really providing a great disservice to humanity by raising children, putting them on an unhealthy trajectory to become adults riddled with so many issues that most never clear up. They don't resolve. They just go through life, creating more chaos, hurting more people. They themselves may very well end up abusing and neglecting their children or raising their children as they were raised in dysfunction. This can be healed. 
if we begin to talk about it. If we keep this silent forever, well, more and more parents will continue to give us adults that then society suffers the consequences of those adults. So, anyway, I would like to hear what you guys have to say. Kathleen, maybe if there is a next life for you, perhaps, well, clearly you didn't learn your lesson because you just abandoned your children. Maybe you're going to have to come back and do it all over again to learn that when a woman gives birth to a child, they take on a lifetime responsibility to that child. And their responsibility is to raise their children with love and care and compassion. Perhaps you'll have to learn it again. Try to learn it in your next life. There's a lot of mothers like Kathleen.